Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I'm out looking for antiques. Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode on this blizzardy morning. I uh, stopped at a lady's house this morning to pick up uh, some other antiques that she had kicking around that uh, she wanted to be rid of. I bought a whole bunch of estate boxes which I'll go through in an unboxing video uh, afterwards. It is just a real blizzard out there. For those of you in warmer climates, it's like a rainstorm but colder. <laughs> uh, but the old ambulance is just uh, plugging away nicely. I've got winter tires on it, uh, or snow tires I should say, so it, get through, it gets through this kind of stuff just fine. Um, I just finished loading the whole vehicle, we're gonna get back to the shop. I've given a heads up to uh, Bob the Bottle Man, to let him know that there's boxes of bottles yet unsearched, so I'm sure he's gonna be popping by at some point today to have a look. With any luck, I'm gonna have a lot of this stuff sold before the end of the day, and the goal with owning an antique store is that you wanna buy stuff that you think you might have a customer for right away, because you don't wanna be sitting on stuff forever, and I think that's what I did today. Hopefully we got some cool stuff, we're gonna go through, and I'll show you what we got. I had to park in the backyard today because they're clearing snow up at the front and it's probably, I don't know, like a half foot of snow that's come down in the last hour. Hopefully I can get out of here after, but I was able to unpack everything from the store. At the shop, safe and sound. And this is my assortment of stuff that I got in today. Well, not the Lionel training set, I had that before, but all these little boxes here did come in today and we're gonna go through them one by one and uh, lay things out. And I've not gone through the majority of these boxes. Um, I was told, and sometimes when I go to a state, they say, listen, that's a bunch of bottles. You got to take the whole thing, take it or leave it. So uh, that's what I did. I uh, just took a bunch of stuff without going through it. Um, some of the things I saw in here, I knew were kind of okay. So I think based on uh, the price I got everything for, it should be all right. But we're going to unpack, put stuff on the counter. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll end up with a few gems in here today. We'll start with the first box because... Well, it's open already and it's going to be easy to access things. Um, I wanted to point out that I don't normally buy cups and dishes and things of that nature, but I do buy them when they're from a railway. And that is an early Canadian national system. That's um, CNR. So that they had steamships, uh, trains, all sorts of things. Canadian national is still around, known as CN. Uh, that's a little coffee cup that came off of probably one of their trains or ship. That's a slightly newer version. That's their new logo. You can always kind of tell how old something is from the logo. But things that are um, from a railway, like the Northern Alberta Railway, things that have logos on it like that are much more collectible, especially if they're used on a train. So when I do buy cups or glasses, usually it has to be like, you know, off a steamship or off of a train like these are. That's where the interest lies for me. Um, as we're going through this box here, there's a few interesting little things. Now, I'm not sure. This is a screw top lid off of a what presumably was a bottle. I'm not sure what type of bottle that was. Maybe somebody watching at home knows, and you can put it in the comment. But I liked it because it's a figural piece of, like, you know, a little kid, kind of with a uh, whoops, what did I do face. <laughs> um, it'd be curious if I ever found the bottle that that went off of, that would be a piece that I'm sure somebody would be missing out of their collection. That was just kind of fun. Also a little uh, garniture. This is probably off of uh, the way it clasps like that. It locks in. That's probably off an old ice chest or locking ice box. Um, nice piece. And if you're uh, rebuilding a cabinet or want to put some fun hardware on it, a lot of times people do buy old hardware like that because it looks so cool. Here's another, this is a railway lock. Now this one uh, was dug out of the ground. It's not in the greatest shape. It does work still though. You can see the difference in condition between the key, which was brass and it's in perfect condition and the lock itself, uh, which has started to rust. Now there are some rusting agents you can put on there that will take the rust away. Uh, I've used some before. Uh, the fact it's working is a good sign, but this is CNR, Canadian National Railway, with its matching key. That kind of goes with that Canadian National Cup. Same kind of idea. Now here's another cup that's kind of interesting. I'll see if I can hold it up to the light. Maybe you can see. Um, it says the McDonald. 
Grand Trunk Pacific. Now, the McDonald Hotel is the Hotel McDonald's here in town. It was only the Grand Trunk Pacific for, I think, just a handful of years, and then it uh, got changed over to Canadian Pacific. Big old Grand Railway Hotels, they're all across the country in Canada and the US. And, um, you know, it's like a five-star hotel. And so this would have been a very early piece, uh, maybe for sipping cognac or who knows. Uh, but very nice early glass etched, fine glassware in a nice green glass. And the fact that says the McDonald, well, that hotel is still in existence. And I bet they don't even have something like that in their own collection. It's a rare find, a rare piece, especially the fact it says Grand Trunk Pacific right on it garniture off of a train. There's a few little railway type accessories here. This would have been inside of the cabin. Uh, this is, a, I believe, a foot warmer. You'd put piping hot water into this thing. It's made by Medelta Potteries, a medicine hat. Would have had a little stopper that went in there. And you heat it right up. It sits on the base and uh, I guess you'd just probably set your feet or warm something with it. It's kind of an unusual thing. Um, you don't see them too, too often, because it's not a commonly used item. People don't use them for, you know, making pickles or things like that. So not as common. This I thought was cool, because um, I know exactly what it is. It's off of an old cabinet like mine. If you see how I've got that little, it says bicycle accessories, that's one of those. I've got, uh, I think one of these was missing. Now it's not exactly the same, but I could put that on as filler. Again, something useful that I can uh, make use of right away. A little railway book. Canadian Pacific Railway Company, General Train and Interlocking Rules. And that's dated 1928. Canadian Pacific. They're fun little books that tell you how to operate a train, how the signals worked. A neat piece. This is kind of cool. Now, for those of you that collect gasoline and oil and gas related stuff. White Rose and Anarco is one of the more collectible. This would be from about the 1920s and it's a miniature version of their large um, oil can that would have been out at that time. Now this is probably about a quarter the size of the real one, but the graphics on it are exactly the same as what you would have found on an original can. You can see the Anarco boy who's famously holding his chalkboard, his slate. And um, one of the more desirable oil brand. So to find this one, it's uh, Canadian, which makes it a little bit more rare because there was less stuff up here. Uh, condition is really, really good. It still has the bottom on it. That's a good collectible piece. Very, very happy to find an oil piece in this box. But I noticed that there's a little glass, there's a couple glass bottles in here. These two are both Watkins and Watkins is still around, but those are early Watkins or liniment bottles. But this is an early iodine bottle. You can see the nice thing about it is that it has the skull and crossbones on it the original stopper with the uh the rubber is all completely dried out on it but nice to find it complete and with the skull and crossbones that makes that a really special little piece here's a little lock and you have to be careful with these skeleton keys it's not for house again that is can you see i'll see if i can focus it it says nar northern alberta railways on it that's what that is we'll put that with the other train stuff over there and we've got some more pictures. I had some really great early pictures of Edmonton from the 1800s. And uh, with any luck, we'll find some others in here too. Some of these are gonna be uh, marked with what the location is. That looks more like a European scene. There's a fancy looking fellow. Here is a neat one. This is, again, Edmonton, NWT. That stands for Northwest Territories. That's before we became a province. And this would be probably mid to late 1800s judging by the scene, but sometimes these pictures aren't even in the archives. You can see there's buildings that haven't even been put up yet. This is early, early Edmonton history with a nice picture of an early home. You get an idea of how they dressed and what their fence would have looked like. I love early photographs like this because it gives you a sense of our history. And uh, to find some nice early ones like that, that's just a real treat. This book was in the bottom of the box. It's marked electric fixtures from the Safety Car Heating and Lighting Company. And it shows every type of unique and interesting early turn of the century light fixture that there was. Well, you could go back in time and just order a bunch of this stuff for your house. But um, really neat reference piece for people that are doing design or uh, architectural salvage to get an idea of 
um, what these would have been labeled as or what their uses would have been. Just a neat piece. I, I kind of really like books like that because this would have been a, like a store copy. This wouldn't have been something you really took home. Would have been a countertop copy. You would have leafed through that in a store very much like my own here. They would have said, okay, which one are you interested in? And you say, oh yeah, we like that one with the reflector. And then they'd order in part number 8094 and probably in, you know, like a month it would show up in a wagon. Um, but, you know, uh, having a book is a really fun thing to have. I love going through this stuff. Uh, that's just the first box. Already some real neat treasures in there. Um, who knows what else I'm going to find. Didn't even look at this one when I was at the house because I knew what was going to be inside. I have a typewriter just like this at home. And yes, it's an Underwood portable. Nice smaller size. And um, ribbons intact, which is good. And mechanically seems to be in pr pretty good shape. So a nice little piece like that. People do collect these, put them on display. And there's a big, well, I wouldn't say a big, but there's quite a few younger people, younger is in like in their teens and 20s, that are buying typewriters and using them. Um, so there is a, a market for these for uh, even, you know, for folks to come and uh, purchase now. I'm looking at the keyboard here and you can see it's got the British pound on it. So this would have been, um, well, in Canada, you know, we would have uh, been using our Canadian dollar at the time this came out. So this is a, a British, like an imported typewriter, but glass keys, good condition, really good condition. Actually, that's just dusty. That'll shine up nice. And it's got the original case, good little find. This box is not full of edible seeds and nuts, it's full of bottles. Um, the first one that kind of stands out actually does not look like it belongs in there. It's a little fire truck. It's not even a bottle, it's just sort of an ornament, but it's cool. Set that aside. Um, going through some of these, many of them would have had paper pharmacy type labels that are now missing, like that. It would have just said what drugstore it was from, what was inside. Uh, and so this one, uh, oil of musk warm slightly. I don't think I, it's still completely full. That's probably why it's in the plastic bag. Um, this is a stopper from one of those old McLaughlin bottles that uh, Bob picked up the other day. Of course, really rare bottle. You'll probably want that, so I'm going to keep that aside. Uh, other bottles are embossed, so if it doesn't have a paper label on it, you can still read what it was. This was uh, palat palatinoids. Um, those were like an indigestion type. I think they were made of cloves. They had a lot of stuff back in those days to really help keep you, well, let's say, um, regular. Uh, everything from, you know, a little bit of poison to keep you regular to whatever, palatinoids. I mean, cloves aren't the worst thing, but I mean, what were they eating back then that they constantly had to worry about flushing out their system? Um, either way, a lot of this stuff you find, these little medicine bottles, are somewhat collectible, especially if they have an interesting sort of name. Some of them would be considered snake oil, like it was, um, that's an expression that you use for something that really did nothing for you, um, but they marketed it as being, having medicinal properties. Like, Uncle Willie's, you know, snake oil medicine, uh, have a drink of this and it'll make you 10 years younger, and then you find out it's just like whiskey. Um, Ellis Cream Balm. This is an old, it looks like Vaseline. Yeah, that's a really early Vaseline container. They don't come in those little jars. They do come in little, I think the jars are blue or they come in the plastic tubs now, but that's a fairly early one, turn of the century. So lots of neat little bottles in there. And sometimes people craft with these or they do other things with them. Um, you can tell if they've been buried in the ground, there's calcium on it and you can use some products. Sometimes like a CLR will take the calcium off of the glass. Um, I don't have any CLR handy to give it a try, otherwise I would. Others, you can see they, they come up really, really nice. Um, but I'll see if there's any poison ones in there, anything they're a little bit more valuable. Otherwise, these will probably just go out, you know, kind of at a price by the each, and people can do whatever they want with them. Sometimes you just need a little bottle for something. And look, I'll have lots of little bottles. Unpacking some boxes and going through some things. If you remember last week, we also had a variety of bottles come in. And Tim has come here all the way from Minneapolis to come and visit. Uh, he had some work to do here, but uh, you ended up finding something cool. Yeah, actually, I did. I found the same, the old... Uh ink bottle well, and we have a look at it. and we'll take a look at it right here. I have it in the bag. Now you were saying you have a, an older home filled with antique furniture and yeah. you have a, a desk, a hundred year old desk. Yes, and it is a hundred year old desk and we will be putting this on there. 
Yeah, and I was, I was saying this interesting story about that is the lady I got this from had dug this out of the ground about 50 years ago. It has a patent date of 1893 on it. And there's your rest for your pen. So that was in last video. And now here we are just a week later and it's going to a new home. I saw the last video and I was looking through the store. I saw that and I thought, this is what I need to have. Well, I'm so glad you came so in today to see well. us. <laughs> Thank you. And I did manage to get some other nice early soda bottles. This one's from Starlight capital city this is edmonton alberta that's an early local bottle capital beverages um there's also a few other interesting ones in here too prairie rose with a nice twist another early uh jj mclaughlin bottle so that's not quite the right lid for that but that is a mclaughlin lid probably off a different bottle uh but some good soda bottles mixed in here too i'm just digging through this box now which is pretty much all these little medicine sort of bottles and uh, we'll see if there's any kind of interesting ones in the mix here as I go through. One bottle that kind of stood out was this. It's in really good shape for starters but it says Wing Li Wai. So it is a uh, Chinese origin bottle. Could have been like a rice wine. A lot of times wine bottles have that indentation on the bottle. Um, pretty nifty piece and it's in fantastic condition. This, I noticed, it says Evangeline Pepper Sauce, made in St. Martinville, Louisiana. Louisiana, you guys have been known for your hot sauce for ages, but look how tiny the opening is on there. You had a little dab will do you. It's like, um, you know, mind you, who knows back in those days what they thought was spicy. They might have been like, what is there, ketchup on this thing? Ha! As they try and spit it out of their mouth. But um, yeah, that's kind of a neat hot sauce. That's an early hot sauce bottle. I just know there's got to be somebody out there who collects antique hot sauce bottles. That seems like the sort of thing someone's going to collect. I'm going to keep that one aside to do a little bit of research on. And a lot of these other ones look like they're more um, little medicine bottles, things of that nature. Um, so I'm going to sift through and try and organize a little bit of this stuff too. This is about a 1904 or so daddy's sauce bottle. This was bought out by Heinz over the past many years, a long time ago. Uh, they manufactured like a steak sauce. It would have been a, like a, a meat sauce, kind of like HP sauce. If you're in Canada or England, you might know that. It's like a heavy Worcester sauce with vinegar. Would have been a like dark brown kind of color. Um, and there's all kinds of neat little things in here. History of food, at least history of food bottles. And uh, there are some people that will actually buy a bottle like this that still has the stuff in it and they will try it. And um, that just seems gross. When I went through the Potter's house, people wanted to buy the food out of the fridge and eat it on camera. Did not send it to them because I didn't want to inadvertently kill anybody, but there are folks that do all sorts of stuff out there. Now here's something that's not a bottle. I've been kind of taking out the bottles from the boxes that were a little bit more on the interesting side, like 100-year-old beer bottles or whiskey and scotch bottles that were kind of neat. Um, did find this, though. This is probably from the 60s or 70s, but it is a railway clock. CN with the 24-hour time. This would have been in a station or a terminal. Pretty neat piece. Even the bag is old. Zeller's hasn't been around here forever. Um, I'm finding that there's, I mean, I ended up with a lot of bottles. I mean, these are all boxes of bottles here. And in this situation, I don't normally sell bottles um, this quantity, so I'll probably end up trying to wholesale these out to another collector. Uh, I am interested to see what little unique things in here like this old Pepsi bottle salt and pepper shaker I might find that are kind of standout items that I can sell in the store. So anything that's a little bit more unique, I'm separating and uh, anything that, um, you know, is kind of in mass quantities, I'm going to try and move along. I've got all these old, that's white whiskey, Buchanan's white, Buchanan's black and white whiskey. There's tons of bottles. It's an old piece of copper says something on it too. M. McKenney? McKen McKechnie? <laughs> Stanford, Montana? It's hard to read. It might have come off an old trunk or who knows what that's from. Um, kind of a unique item. This is an old lantern. Piper usually made railway stuff. Oh, that could have something to do with the railway. I'm going to take it out and see if it's all there. It looks like this one is new old stock, meaning it's never been used or sold. It had the original instructions there. It says, yes, care of oil signal lamps. 
this would have been an insert for a uh, railway signal lamp with that tiny little glass piece. This is just kind of unusual. It's all there and it's obviously in like brand new condition, still has the instructions. It's a neat find. This was another neat item that came in today. This is another arcade machine. As you know, I'm always on the hunt for cool old arcade machines. This one is an English Smarties machine. Now Smarties, for us, and it looks like it was then too, they are candy coated chocolate, kind of like an M&M's. It's like Canada or England's version of an M&M's. Um, this is an early piece, you know, probably teens or 20s kind of era. And you'd put a penny in, you'd fling your penny out. If it went around, it would spit out a roll of Smarties at you. Now, um, the person I bought it from, she said that it's almost impossible to win. Well, that's how most of these games go. In fact, that's how casinos make their money. Um, that said, it's a cool piece. It's gonna need a little bit of TLC, but the graphics are amazing and that's what people are after. This will be a great display piece and I might even keep it and put it up in the store. Some really neat finds today. Going through some of these old pictures, you know, you look back and you reflect on times that have gone by and you think and you know, you're left with the impression that a lot of these people in these photos were raging alcoholics because most of the bottles that we find uh, dug up in our river valley in the old dumps are whiskey and gin and uh, you know apparently they uh, they liked their hooch back in the old days so uh, 1800s wild west kind of Edmonton yeah they were uh, finding other ways to keep warm in our winters but I found some neat stuff I'm really happy with the collection of the things that came in today I'm certain that I'll get a call from um, uh, Bob, our bottle friend, about at least the poison bottles and some of the other ones. And uh, one of the other things that I'm really happy with is this little Anarco oil can. That's just such a cute little thing and a nice little collectible. So some fun stuff. I have a lot of work ahead of me to put all this mess away, but that's what we do. Every day stuff comes in and stuff goes out and hopefully we'll find new homes for it. Thanks a lot for watching today's episode. If you have not already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can check us out on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y E G. Uh, we're on Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated as well, where I'll post pictures of things that are for sale and uh, give some updates and information on what's happening on the store. If you're in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, come by and see us live in person here. We're located on uh, 127th Street in the lovely historic Westmount neighborhood in this beautiful 106-year-old general store. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a lovely day and bye for now. Update. Probably not a surprise, but our good friend Bob the Bottle Man showed up and we ended up wholesaling the whole pile of bottles out to him. So are you happy, Bob? <laughs> Can't uh, wait to go through them. And you're going to probably do a video on your own. Now, Bob has a YouTube channel now. I do. Uh, what's it called? Just Bob Harder. Bob Harder? Okay. Not Bob the Bottle Man yet? Nope. Bob Harder. Okay. Yet. I'm on Instagram with Bob's Old Bottles. And uh, you can friend me on Facebook if you like, just, just my name. Okay, well maybe you'll go through all the bottles you got on your page. And I, then, I got uh, a lot of researching to do and then I'll, I'll be posting pics uh, like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> oh, more to come, <laughs> glad you stopped in today. Uh, so am I.